Jesus opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. This is not a new problem. It has surfaced throughout the history of the church in ages many times in many ways. The current situation is as follows. We have two opposite errors on opposite ends of the theological spectrum. Polarized errors. One is the era of replacement theology, supersessionism, that says God has no prophetic purpose for Israel and the Jews, that the church has replaced Israel, etc. This is complete and utter nonsense. It is a false teaching. It will lead to a misunderstanding of other doctrine, especially eschatology and the return of Jesus. That is one error. There's an opposite error, however, where we have people, even non-Jews, becoming Judeocentric where you've got so-called messianic fellowships, which I've heard mockingly referred to as synagogues, where they're putting Gentiles under the law, even Gentiles undergoing ritual circumcision. Completely absurd, where people are lifting up Jewishness instead of Jesusness. Um, what they're actually doing is taking one expression of Jewish culture, diasporic Ashkenazi Jewish culture, mixing it with charismatic extremism, not that I'm anti-charismatic. And they're calling this somehow messianic. Well, it's not Israeli Jewish culture. It's not Yemenite Jewish culture. It's not Sephardic Jewish culture. It's certainly not biblical Jewish culture. It's Yiddishkeit. It's basically Euro-American Ashkenazi Jewish culture, Yiddishkeit, mixed with hyper-charismatic expressions of, of, of Christianity. And this is what's become of the messianic movement. It's a lunatic fringe. So in reaction to that error, some people have become opposed to anything Hebraic or Judaic, forgetting that Paul said, the root supports you, the word being riza, root, not roots, root. There's no Hebrew roots teaching in scripture. It's root, it's singular. Secondly, they forget that to the Jews belongs the oracles of God. They are two polarizing errors. Those reacting against the errors of replacement theology become hyper-messianic or become Judeocentric instead of Christocentric. But in reaction to that, there are other people who are polarizing, becoming opposed to anything, bearing the scent of, of the Hebraic or Judaic origins of the Christian faith. Neither extreme are balanced. Neither extreme are balanced. We have to understand something. The church fathers Hellenized the church. They began reinterpreting Christianity, not as a Judaic religion, but as a Hellenistic one. Not as a theology, but as a philosophy. We must go back to the way the apostles handled scripture. They came from the Jewish culture of the Second Temple period. We see this. The New Testament handles the Old Testament in the same way the Qumran literature, the Dead Sea Scrolls do. This is the factual reality. Be careful of people who deny the Judaic origins theologically of the Christian faith and the need to understand and interpret the scriptures in that context. Be careful of those people. They're misguided. They've imposed a culture alien to scripture that originates with the church fathers and that was propagated throughout the centuries and they imposed it on scripture. Completely wrong. On the other hand, be careful of those who are lifting up Jewishness all the time and trying to make Gentiles become observant as Jews. You can't keep the law anyway. Real Judaism, authentic scriptural Judaism has not existed since 70 AD. Even if the temple is rebuilt, the Antichrist is going to defile it with the abomination of desolations. So we have these two opposite extremes. Neither one is balanced, neither one is scriptural, and both of which are deceptive. Avoid either of these two extremes.
My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much and God bless.